welcome everybody to this latest episode of Really Dicey. Um, we have a guest today, Eric Jackson, uh, who I've heard of at TotalCon. I, I heard that he had a Shira game going there, but uh, I really wanted to talk to you because uh, Shira is very popular nowadays. Uh, the series is just wrapped up at Netflix. And um, I'm very curious into how you made the world of Shira and how you fit that into 5e. Uh, where, where did the idea or the inspiration came from to start up a Shira campaign? Well, um, I, my primary, although I work for uh, Dark Phoenix and they're great folks, um, and I do cons, most of my game mastering uh, takes place at a uh, at my library, uh, where I'm uh, I'm the mentor for a, 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 a YA Dungeons and Dragons group that meets weekly. Uh, most of my kids are big cartoon fans. Uh, so a number of them had seen She-Ra and were very excited about it. The other reason why they were very excited about it is about 60, 75% of my kids are uh, either LGBTQ or LGB, and, and all of them are LGBTQ allies. And so this show really, um, really puts that front and center. Um, and so they were like, you know, they were, you know, we've talked, they talked about, and since I spend most of my time trying to introduce people into gaming and like, well, you know, let's think about something you've seen in media that you would like to do. she is just full of like really interesting characters and, 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 uh, and different character types. And I, would, and I would say that there's some really good writing on the show. So the kids can detect that and they get an idea of character development. And we can talk about, well, you know, what this is, what's a redemption arc or, you know, what, and so there was a lot of chatting over just regular D&D characters and relating it to she -Ra. Uh, and from there, it was a, um, then it became a, it became what happens in most campaign settings when I run them, which is if, I, if you give me Greyhawk, you're not going to be in the company of seven, right? You're not going to be that big first epic group. Uh, if you're not going to be Elminster or Drist in the Forgotten Realms, right? But you might want to, you're going to want to see them in the background or you're going to want to see something that they saw. And so, um, to coin the, I, the the famous Star Trek episode below decks, right? So that was that where where you where you see you see all of like Picard and all these other people going, but it's the ensigns who are doing stuff, and that was what I did with Shira. I took all the big characters and I threw them in the background, and I made the characters uh, members of the Resistance who you you know maybe see kind of on in the background normally in television, like the Knights of Bright Moon or the. Um, or you know the sorcerer, or you know the sorcerers of uh, the sorcerers who live on the floating island, or um, you know a horde soldier, or something along those lines. And it was it became that that became our um, that became the basis of the game. And uh, the setting was easy because there's a big mysterious nobody knows where anything is area called uh, 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 you know, called the Whispering Wood, which is in between horde and horde area and uh, Bright Moon, which is just weird place where everybody meets up all the time. And so I was like, okay, well, nobody's mapped this. I can't get nailed for not being canon uh, or not, you know, because that is the one thing you will, if you work with a pre-existing setting, you can't change it. But if you can get in those little corners where nobody's been before, you can sort of extrapolate it outwards. And that was, that's how it all happened. What came to classes? Um... Uh, did you, how, how did you work that and fit that into the, the Shira setting? Um, well, I started with, um, I started with some, some basic characters that I knew people really kind of quote wanted to play. Like everybody wants to play like a Catra character because she's a big scene eating, like she's, she's got a lot of things going on. So um, fortunately, 5e has Tabaxi. So it was super easy to drop a Tabaxi uh, character in. Uh, but then I'm like, okay, well, Catra is a fighter, so let's see if we can't switch it up a little. little. So uh, I make her a, sorcer a sorceress instead, right? And so she, she's on the resistance side, and then you have your cat person. And now all of a sudden, Catra's not the only cat person on, on the show, and, but you know kind of what they're like, what they look like, how they, you know, they're very emotional. You got this whole thing going on. Um, and then you can sort of just, I just started going out from there, and uh, there's a character uh, I know uh, I don't know if you've seen too much of the show. There's a character called Double Trouble, who yes. was a shapeshifting character. So we've got changelings, right? Um, there's a character. Then I then we had to start getting a little. You know, obviously we have humans, uh, but then to go out a little further, a lot of the world is the are um, there's 
there's this mechanical aspect to the world, a very sort of, I don't, I don't know, you're not steampunk, but like a post-industrial sort of look to the horde. So that brought, I was like, okay, then there are bots everywhere. So I'm like, okay, let's steal from Warforge, right? Let's grab a Warforge and put those characters in there. So now you can be a bot, like one of Entrapta's bots. You can be a Tabaxi, you can be a Changeling. There's even um, uh, uh, on the Horde side, there's a, a, a lizard person, uh, Rohelio. He's one of the background uh, guards in the show. So I'm like, okay, so I got lizard folk, I got this. And then, I, then it was easy. Like there's lots of animal-esque people. So like there's a turtle character, right? You know, okay, because that fits with the aesthetic of what, you know, anything animal oriented is gonna be great. Uh, and so we just, and I just, yeah, those were, that's what I came up with for the five-ish character. You know, I had seven characters for five players on the day. Uh, but I could see it, you know, you could just go all out on that because 5e, the other really good thing about 5e mechanically is that it's, it's very storytelling oriented in that uh, a lot of the bonuses and things you get are, oh, you get advantage, you get disadvantage. It's, it's not number crunchy like it used to be, um, like in four and 3.5. Um, so I felt like when I wrote the characters, if there was something I was like, well, I want someone to be able to be really good at this or not good at this. I just put a couple little notes like, oh, you have advantage with this and you have disadvantage with this. And, and that got me 90% of the way. Uh, and then after that, it's just, it, it's the standard, okay, what makes a good party mix? Uh, you know, you need to have somebody with some, some, you need to have some arcane, you gotta have some, gotta have some religion, you gotta have some, you gotta have some thieves, you gotta have some fighters, right? It's all gotta be there. And then it was just, okay, who fits those roles where? A couple magic items, roll it all out, make sure we covered everything for the adventure. And then you need a setting and the great thing about the new She-Ra is that there's a whole lot of this first one stuff. So there's a whole previous existing uh, ancient civilization. So there's your dungeon crawl, right? You know, you start off in your world. It's pretty classic, actually. When I, when I think about it, I, it's not very innovative because it's like, oh, we're going to start in the woods. We're going to find a dungeon. We're going to go down into the dungeon. And we're going to solve a problem. Like, you know, that, that, that's a, that's a four-hour uh, game. But you could take that a lot further uh, if you were gonna go more campaign oriented. But for a con game, that, you know, that's it. You know, upstairs, downstairs, problem, maybe an escape plan and you're all set. What do you do for like monsters? Uh, how do you, how do you f formulize uh, the stats for them? So I generally picked out, um, I picked out, there's a lot of giant spiders uh, involved for some reason. I, I have a feeling somebody on the staff at she really didn't like spiders. Uh, but there are a lot of like spider or spider robots that are there. Uh, so I took some, some of the large spider stats and then I, um, I made them constructs. So I gave them all the construct, uh, I gave them all the construct advantages. Uh, and that was, those were most of my like random bad guys. And then we had, um, the top, I had a little bit of a hard time with, uh, some of the hologram stuff, uh, which uh, I kind of were, I, I think I eventually worked them out to be like undead, which was the closest thing I could get to a sort of spiritual projection. Uh, but, but that also helped tie in some religious aspects, which Shira doesn't really have. Shira is a very, if you worship anything, you worship the old, you know, the first ones, and that's everybody, it's kind of a, religion neutral sort of storyline. So it was nice to have, that was the one thing I could play with and pull around and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, then, then there were lots of traps, you know, you, there's lots of, lots of mechanical traps and then other bots. So between those, that was seemed to be my whole, my, that was my bad guy workout. But she is a, I, I, I highly recommend for anybody who's going to be working with, um, uh, working with anybody who, who's seen the cartoon. It's a, great like base place to start uh it deals it and it really helps it, it, that they have this visual media they have this visual picture of what the world looks like um and you do it, there's very you don't have to do a lot of establishing shots hmm. as it were you don't have to sort of do that big info dump at the beginning you're here you're you know it, it, for for people who are more dnd oriented you can say you're in greyhawk and like okay here are all these assumptions you know you're in forgotten realms you're in eberron you know what that means. If you say you're in Etheria, that's another great way to sort of just, okay, now we don't have to worry about that. We can jump right into the story 
and blow through it. And the storylines in Shira are great. Uh, okay. So it's really easy to really easy to kind of follow along with them. There's a and it's because it's all based on party unity. Like that's the if you if there's a through line for all of the show, no spoilers. Uh, the the you know there's if there's a through line for the show, it's friendship is magic. And you should always be, you know, you should work together. When you work together, it works out best. And I, D and D is the the game that, do you get all philosophical. D and D is the game that taught me how to work with people. Uh, <laughs> so, so it's the perfect combination, you know. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for sharing this. This is great. Um, is there anything else that I haven't asked you that you would like to share with our viewers? Wow. Oh boy. I'll talk all day, but uh, yeah, no, uh, I think um, I think the best thing that anybody who is uh, who's my age, uh, who's listening to this, uh, find younger people and teach them how to play. Uh, I it's a great experience, uh, and there's 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 very little more satisfying than a seeing younger people take on the the, the, the you know take on the hobby and give their spin to it, because that really and that really helps inform you as to what your game is going to be like. And my second reason for doing this is you can reuse all of those terrible, all, all those things that all your friends know already, they've never heard of. So you can pull all those old things out of your hat. Uh, and, and, you know, any, any of that, any of those, what it's a, you know, it's a sliding trap that goes down, but then it hits, you land into the ooze or whatever that classic thing is you remember, it's brand new for them. And so you get to you get to do it again, which was, which is fun, and they get to see it for the first time, which is great. So those are my those are my favorite D and D thoughts. So do it. Go 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 find younger people and teach them how to play. Excellent, excellent. Well, again, thank you very much. Um, if you if any of our viewers have any questions, feel free to write them below. I'll be happy to pass them over to Eric. Uh, again, thank you so much. And um, stay oh, tuned. Uh, just I want to put my plug in because I didn't say it. I said I work at my library, and I can say that I I, I work. I, I'm a volunteer at the Drakeit Public Library in Massachusetts. So thumbs up to my library who keeps letting me come back and let my kids play. Just want to sorry. Make sure I get my plug in. No, that's excellent. Yeah, definitely support your local libraries. Thank you very much.